John Stauber, Center for Media and Democracy, and uh, Sheldon Rampton and I wrote Mad Cow USA a decade ago, which predicted the emergence of the disease in the U.S. because these feeding practices were happening and we were being lied to uh, about them. You're familiar with yeah, that company that's suing for the right to test their own beef? Uh, Creekstone. Uh, Creekstone. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder how far away they are. Uh, they've that only just begun. That will went through the courts for years probably. And in the meantime, they've lost access to the Japanese market for their beef. The Japanese said, sure, you can continue to sell us your beef, but you have to test it like we do. And any cow you find with mad cow, you have to keep out. They said, okay, we'll do it. They went about doing it. The U.S. Department of Agriculture stepped in and said, we will not allow it. They said, why not? They said, because there's no scientific basis for testing this meat. And they cited a law from the 19-teens, you know, that had nothing to do with testing for mad cow disease. So, yeah, here's a great example. The U.S. Department of Agriculture now admits we've had mad cow disease in this country for 10 years. We know mad cow disease can move into the human population and kill people. In Japan, they test 100% of their cattle. In Europe, they test tens of millions of cattle. That way they find out if they're successfully keeping the infected beef out of the food supply. In the U.S., we test fewer than one half of 1%. All that testing is secret, and only the government does it. So do you, test, do you trust the government? Of course not. You can't verify this. In the United States, it's illegal to feed cattle blood to calves. You can go into feed stores all around rural America and buy a calf supplement for dairy calves. So you take them off their mother's milk and you put them on this stuff and then you look at what's it from and it's from, legally, from cattle blood and cattle fat with cattle protein in it, all of which can transmit mad cow disease. It's not a matter of it's super expensive to test this. It's a matter of the U.S. beef industry is so politically powerful. They make billions of dollars taking slaughterhouse waste and rather than disposing of it properly, feeding it back to livestock for fat and protein supplements. That's what amplifies and spreads mad cow disease. Half of every animal is unfit for human consumption. So, and we know from mad cow disease, that if you feed that, that back to cows, uh, you're going to amplify and spread it. We've been doing that for decades in this country, even though we're all told it's not done, it's legal. And we've got mad cow disease. So yeah, it, it's just a total uh, Orwellian situation. Well, and, and a lot of farmers and a lot of people say it's illegal to feed rendered feed back to cows, but we're operating, and my understanding is we're operating on an honor system. Exactly. Where, um, Here's the law. The law says that if you're a feed company, the feed you bag that is from cattle is supposed to be labeled that it contains uh, cattle, meat, and bone meal, right? Well, that's just a labeling law. Once those bags are bought, they can be fed to any animal, and the inspection of that labeling law is totally inadequate. The countries that have dealt successfully with mad cow disease have said, we are not going to allow any slaughterhouse waste to be fed back to any livestock, period. That's what you have to do, because then the stuff isn't going to the farm. I was in a feed mill with the Japanese TV crew a year and a half ago uh, in a little rural town in Wisconsin, and they were showing us their meat and their bone meal that they are mixing into cattle feed. It was just in a huge, big bin. And they said, but don't worry, it comes from pigs. Yeah, it comes from pigs that are fed cattle meat and bone meal, and there's no way of even knowing that it comes from pigs because it all looks the same. There's two ways it's being hidden. One is that it takes 20, 30, 40 years for a human to develop mad cow disease. We know from Britain's experience that the transmission from the cattle into people is fairly inefficient. Um, only about 200 people are confirmed worldwide to have died of human mad cow disease. Uh, there are thought to be thousands of people who are incubating it, but they won't die for years because there's this long invisible latency period. But also now we know that in Britain there are two people 
who are dead of mad cow disease, not from eating the cows, but from getting blood products from humans who ate the cows. Mad cow disease is contaminating the human blood supply. There's no test that can find mad cow disease in blood. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a very invisible disease. Um, we don't know how many people are going to eventually contract it from cattle. And the big question now is, once it's in people, it spreads much more effectively from people to people, and we know it spreads through the blood supply. It could spread through infected surgical instruments. If somebody is operated on, for instance, their, their brain, and uh, those uh, instruments are uh, sterilized, it's impossible to sterilize those instruments to kill prion diseases. So basically, what we're dealing with is a problem that, for many reasons, is unfortunately easy to sweep under the rug, but eventually it crops up down the road. We don't know how big a price we're going to pay for our failure to put in place the strict feeding ban and testing that the Europeans have put in place. Well, what about the misdiagnosis that people say uh, it's being diagnosed as Alzheimer's? Or yeah. this new one, rapid onset Alzheimer's. Is that, does that make you wonder? Well, there's four or five million people in this country right now who have this dementia disease called Alzheimer's. And within that big population, uh, you can mask other dementias. And people are not routine, routinely autopsied with dementia diseases. In fact, um, there's a bias against doing autopsies on people with dementia because it might be human mad cow or it might be another form, sporadic Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, another form of human prion diseases. And if it is, all those autopsy instruments and any medical instruments used on that patient have to be permanently disposed of because you can't disinfect them. So we've got this situation here where, yeah, we have a huge population of people with dementia, and because we're not routinely uh, autopsying and we're not aggressively looking for uh, Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease cases, we don't know how many there are in the U.S. That doesn't mean that we have hundreds of thousands of cases, but it probably means that we're missing hundreds or maybe even thousands of cases. They could be sporadic, they could be familial, uh, familial rapid onset, they could be human mad cow disease. We're not looking for this. We're not dealing with the disease. You know, other countries deal with it. They've learned from their mistakes. All the EU countries, Japan, we don't learn from their mistakes. We just try to hide it and tell the public we're doing the right things when we're not. Not as far as we know, but we do have chronic wasting disease, of course, in Wisconsin, which is a same type of disease, an infectious prion disease. One thing that's interesting about chronic wasting disease is it spread very readily deer to deer through saliva. So we do have an example of this type of disease that's rather easily spread through saliva. We certainly haven't seen that in the human variations, thank goodness. But what the prion scientists will tell you is this is why you should be super cautious in dealing with prion diseases because they're like, unlike anything else, new strains are created and we don't know what those strains will be capable of doing. And this strain we call chronic wasting disease, uh, we now know from some very good research that was done in Colorado, is actually highly infectious through saliva, deer to deer. Well, I'm not saying it's spreading people to people in saliva. But this is like, well, if you want to develop a nightmare scenario of what, what are worst case scenarios, a human prion disease that spreads that, ease, that way would be one of them. What I tell people is eat organic, especially right. in Wisconsin. You can but get I got organic. That won't do that. So I tell them at least stay, stay away from Single the cuts, stay away from the spine. John Stauber, Center for Media and Democracy, and uh, Sheldon Rampton and I wrote Mad Cow USA a decade ago, which predicted the emergence of the disease in the U.S. because these feeding practices were happening and we were being lied to uh, about them.